Why didn't anyone tell me that the Quran holds the key to a major mystery of our time? Because neither the Quran nor science claims what you're about to say. Before I begin, hi, I'm Sharif from Egypt. I'm Muslim Sunni. How did regular people build pyramids and put stones as heavy as 10 cars on top of each other? First, which pyramid are you talking about? Are you talking about all pyramids? Are all pyramids made out of stone that weigh 10 cars on top of each other like you like to put it? Obviously no, because there are about 100 pyramids in Egypt. So that means you're specifically talking about the Giza pyramids, since you already have the background picture all over them. And since the evidence you're going to bring forth from the, your supposed scientist are samples taken from the Giza plateau and not anywhere else. I don't know about you, but I don't see anybody saying that the blocks at the top of the pyramid are 13 tons. The average weight of a pyramid stone in Khufu's pyramid is 2.5 tons. And look at this picture, the bigger blocks, which are 13 and 15 tons, are all at the very bottom of the pyramid. And the higher up you go, the more they become 2.5 tons. And it's not gradual 15 and then 10 and then 7 and then 6 and then 2.5. No, it's 15, 13 tons at the bottom, at the very bottom. And then they become automatically all of the pyramid. Its average weight is 2.5 tons. And the higher up you go, they become even smaller than that, up to a ton, for example. The Quran has the answer and even modern science agrees. Modern science doesn't agree on what you're about to say and the Quran doesn't say that either. So you're doing a grave mistake in which on judgment day you're gonna be asked by Allah on what you said on this video putting words into the Quran that doesn't say so and spreading it to people as if it does and when non-Muslims come to Egypt and ask us about the pyramids if they're made out of geopolymer we're gonna say this is pseudoscience and complete nonsense. So this way you're hurting what people think about the Quran and I hope you realize that. About 20 years ago scientists found out that the upper stones of the pyramids are very different from the lower ones using the latest technology because they weren't carved from existing stones and carried to the top. No, they were baked on the top. Thank you for giving us the reference in such big bold letters. I feel if that you truly knew that this was the truth of the matter you would have put the, those sources in big bold letters in front of people. This study paper's conclusion, done by Joseph Davidovitz, had been refuted by other scientists on all the points he was trying to make, just to make his geopolymer argument win. And his study on this particular subject doesn't hold water in the scientific world and is actually described by Egyptologists as ridiculous and insulting. But this paper is still online on the Geopolymer website because it's a company that actually makes Geopolymer. So they're benefiting from the internet traffic that it brings them. So this wasn't made purely for science to know whether the pyramids are made out of Geopolymer or not. His paper is obviously biased with presupposed motive. Because they weren't carved from existing stones and carried to the top, no. Yes, they were carved from existing stones. The average weight of a car is 1,300 kilograms. So 1,300 kilograms times 10 equals 13,000 kilograms, meaning 13 tons. And those big stones were mostly at the bottom of the pyramid and not the top, because the higher up you go the, the pyramid, they become 2.5 tons and definitely not 13 tons. And that's excluding, of course, the king's chamber, which is made out of granite and not limestone. So in your video where you mentioned 10 cars, it's only to suit your narrative and to throw off the viewers into misleading paths. Joseph Davidovitz came up with this conclusion due to the fact that he thought that the samples he took from the Khufu pyramid and the quarry sites don't match. But he was shortly disproven by other scientists who made the same test but with better equipment and unbiased motives and opinions. And if you actually read this paper, you will realize how Davidovitz was manipulating data all along to his favor and his geopolymer company. For example, he states that there are air bubbles in the stone, which could not be found in natural stone. But when you look at what he's showing in his paper and compare it with the other paper, you'll find it's a totally normal thing in normal stone, which is a result of air bubble trapped due to the presence of fossilized seashells in the stone. Furthermore, the seashells in the stones were not crushed, which obviously indicates that it was never a poured mixture. And there's also the question of gypsum mortar or gypsum mortar that's all over the pyramid. There's 500,000 tons of gypsum mortar in between the stones all over the pyramid. So if they molded stone, why use gypsum mortar to hold the stones together? If they're going to mold it in place, then it's going to 
automatically stick to all other stones. If they are going to use the other stones as part of the mold, then they don't need gypsum mortar. But the apparent is that there's gypsum mortar everywhere. And now speaking logically, when you pour a mixture into a container, it's going to take the shape of the container. And we don't see that in any stone of the pyramid. And I'm not talking about the casing stones. I'm talking about the main blocks that build the pyramid. They don't have 90 degree angles and there's even polygons and they're all in different sizes and shapes. So many different angles. It would be really absurd to think that these are all molds. Plus we've never seen any experimentation throughout all of ancient Egypt with this geopolymer science thing. We never saw them like advance it in any way or even experiment with it, trying to do a statue with it. We never found a single mold of any of the stones or maybe if they even tried making a mold for a statue, where is that mold? And why is there chisel marks all over the pyramid? And why not all the other pyramids that were built after Khufu and Khafra and Menkara were built with the same technique? I mean, there's other pyramids, but they, they didn't use the same kind of blocks that were used in Khufu, for example, the Lahun pyramid, for example, or this other pyramid, or the Maidum pyramid. Allah says, and Pharaoh said, so bake for me, O Haman, bricks of clay, and make for me a tower. But wait! First, you cannot and shouldn't ever jump lines in the verses of the Noble Quran. The verse starts by saying, And Pharaoh said, From what I can see from that statement, is that Pharaoh has already pre-built prejudice. He has presupposed ideas in his first and last statement. Meaning the things the ancient Egyptian used to build out of baked clay, meaning mud bricks, are houses, walls, and utility towers, which are found in the archaeological record. And we even have five different wooden molds of five different sizes they used for mud bricks. So if we have those molds for mud bricks, why don't we have the molds for the big bricks? So what does this all mean? It means that Pharaoh didn't want to build a permanent thing from the very beginning for Moses, meaning it's something of no important value to them from the very beginning because he has prejudice. Because he knows if he did give it importance, his people might like it. So it wasn't an enjoyable thing, nor an achievement, nor an extra thing to their belief system. While on the other hand, they enjoyed and were proud of building temples and monuments in all sorts of valuable stone for their gods. The Quran goes even further and tells us who actually made all of this. All of what? All of the pyramids? But Davidovitz took samples only from Khufu's pyramid. And at the time of Pharaoh, the pyramid building age was long gone. They weren't building pyramids anymore. How do I know that? Because the Israelites first appear in the Egyptian records in the Middle Kingdom and they started to be enslaved in the New Kingdom. So Pharaoh was from the New Kingdom and the pyramids are all in the Old Kingdom. And Davidovitz took samples only from the Khufu pyramid and his conclusions were proven wrong. So they stopped building pyramids in the New Kingdom but they were all about temples. This doesn't explain why all the temple columns are made out of several pieces rather than one solid block. Nor does it explain what's on top of the columns, which is also segmented. And also doesn't explain why in other parts of the temples we find structures that are made out of smaller blocks. And the question is, why didn't they just use this geopolymer technology everywhere to make everything? And since the only examined sample taken was from Khufu's pyramid, you cannot simply expand this idea to all other monuments. And why didn't they just use the geopolymer science to make the entire pyramid? Why just the top of the pyramid? I mean, why make so much effort in half of the pyramid if they already have this technology? And also in the Quran, it says, Pharaoh said to Haman, build me a tower so I can climb it to see the God of Moses. And the pyramids are not climbed because we're not in Mexico. The pyramids in Mexico, yes, they are climbed because they made stairs on them. But the ancient Egyptian pyramids didn't have stairs. Around 1865, Egyptologists found hieroglyphs with the name Haman and his title, Chief of the Stone Quarry Workers. Now this part is correct, but you failed to mention a very important part of what's actually written. It says, Chief of the Stone Quarry Workers of Amun. And this is important to mention because he wasn't just any Chief of Stone Quarry Workers. He was the Chief of Stone Quarry Workers of Amun, which makes him in a higher place because Amun was the highest deity in the Pantheon. Plus, they would have definitely had someone with the title of Chief of the Casting Stone Workers, or Chief of the Molds, or Chief of the Woodworks, or Manager of the Wood Finance, or Wazir of the Wood Finance. Because obviously, they're going to need so much wood to make all these molds 
molds and we would have seen in the archaeological record and in their history a lot more traveling to Lebanon to get the wood and we would have seen in their records an immense work of wood and the title chief of the stone quarry workers wouldn't even be called chief since his director would be the chief of molds so that makes Haman in a lower grade and there's somebody above him or casting stone chief meaning stones here would be of lower status and value since it's all going to be crushed anyway into powder in other words if the geopolymer claim is true in any way he wouldn't be called chief of the stone quarry workers but rather chief of the casting stone workers and why would they cut big blocks from the quarry sites that we can witness today if it's all going to be crushed into powder so why cut big chunks of blocks and we see in the quran the pharaoh spoke to this Haman. I've already made a three-part video reply to an ex-Muslim on this in detail. When you watch it, inshallah, you will understand many things and why it's important to mention his full title. I'll try to leave the link in the description below. And no, Prophet Muhammad didn't personally go there to see this and write everything in the Quran. You're also correct about this. And that's why we as Muslims consider the mention of Haman as chief of stone quarry workers of Amun found in the archaeological record to be an impressive historical miracle in the Quran. Because nobody knew of anyone named Haman who lived in Egypt during the time of Moses. At the time the Quran was revealed. Until the 18th century, the writings and the inscriptions of the ancient Egyptians couldn't be understood. Furthermore, as I explained in my three-part video, it wasn't just about matching names, and that the title of chiefs of stone quarry workers of Amun plays a very important role in identifying him, as Egyptologists found this name to be of several people in that time era, but only one had this title, and he coincides with the reign of Ramses II, which perfectly matches the chronological Islamic evidence from the Quran with the 66 years of reign of Ramses II. Because the Quran was written 3000 years later after the pyramids were built. Correction, because the Quran was written 2000 years later after the mention of the name Haman as chief of the stone quarry workers of Amun in hieroglyphs in the archaeological record. That's what's important and impressive about the historical miracle of Haman in the Quran, which has nothing to do with pyramids and pyramid building. Science means peer reviewing, and if it doesn't pass this level of scrutiny, then you're just convincing yourself to suit yourself. You cannot prove that this whole pyramid or pyramid top as you like to put it, is made out of cast stone, all because of one sample that was falsely examined and falsely interpreted, and then debunked, and then Joseph Davidovitz came out crying, saying they lied, and he started to be very rigid. In his response paper, I can see very obviously how he's trying to refute all of what's been said in the scientific paper, and he's doing it in a very unscientific manner. He's lying somewhere, and then misguiding somewhere, misleading arguments, red herring, even the picture that he took of the sample showing it like this is an unscientific picture taken in a garden without giving any measurements. I mean, I can take any pictures, I can show you a picture of this glass and telling you that this is 15 centimeters, while in fact it's 14 centimeters. So a picture doesn't prove anything. If you put measurements on a picture, it doesn't prove anything. There are proper ways of doing things and he didn't do them. So he came out crying, give, showing a picture like this. I mean, it's a joke. This is really a joke. And when he gave the sample to other scientists to examine it, of course they're going to cut it and they're going to it's going to get smaller and and deformed in ways. So he's saying, "Oh, they analyzed another sample, not my sample." You know, the pyramid is still there and there are many scientists. And Joseph Davidovitz is the only one standing like this. Not a single one, Egyptologist or other scientist, is approving of his message. So enough with Davidovitz. I'm not angry with you. I am angry with Davidovitz <laughs> and may Allah guide us to the truth and I sincerely hope you delete your video because it's not scientifically proven, at least yet, you know. Peer reviewing is a very big part of science and uh, we're all scientists. That's why we peer review even in the Quran and we have measuring sticks. So if, for example, in the Quran, if it doesn't have an explicit term pyramid, then you cannot just justify your whole video by saying, hey man, build me mud tower, oh, tower, pyramid, oh, and combine the ages together and make a whole mess out of all this. I know it will be wild to think about this as a reality. I even have a book about it. It's called Pyramid Illusions by Mustafa Gadela. 
So I already know about this and I used to believe it and it's very poetic to be completely thrown off out of the science world and living in my own world and thinking that everybody's bad and I'm the only one who knows the truth. It's all very nice and easy until you hit a wall. I call that meeting the Sphinx, meeting your own Sphinx and the Sphinx calls that growing up from four limbs to two limbs and then three limbs. So I hope one day you realize the truth and you come to Egypt and visit of course. <laughs> And smile, it's sooner. <laughs>